Good evening. This is Maestro with Dawn of War 2 Retribution Elite Modcast. Today, we have a 3v3 on Estia Province. Our first player is Dark Lord Diabolos, playing as the Eldar Farseer. This is a support and buffing commander for the Eldar. Next up, it's going to be Shroom, playing as the Plague Champion, Range Champion for Chaos. Has a damage over time bolter, can get melee weapons later on, can also heal and repair. And finally, it's going to be John Grammaticus, playing as the brother captain of the Ordo Malleus. Tanky melee hero that cannot be knocked down or suppressed. Their opponents on the red team will begin with Olev, playing as a Space Wolves Force Commander. This is a tanky melee hero that buffs and disrupts with Battlecry. Next up, it's going to be Sparks, playing as yet another Farce here. And finally, we're going to have Reacts, Trademark playing as the Lord Commissar. This is a slightly tanky melee hero. Let's actually look at him instead of the fence. Uh, he executes his own troops to buff their damage. All right, then this Commissar looking to tie up the Strike Squad. The Strike Squad themselves looking to tie up the Guardsmen. Of course, the Imperial Guard Tier 1 does revolve a lot on the sustainability of the Sentinel, but the Guardsmen themselves don't have any on-the-field sustainability in Tier 1, so ideally you do want to see if you can get to them. However, Strike Squad will disengage as they are now on the verge of possibly losing a model. However, they haven't uh, they haven't uh, retreated yet, and the Commissar Lord's still in here. Commissar Lord now re- uh, or Lord Commissar retargets to go after the Strike Squad, and we also have this Brother Captain getting pretty low, getting kited a bit and focus fired by the Sentinel as well as the Guardsmen. Meanwhile, in the middle of the map, we are going to see a Farseer getting into melee with some Tactical Marines. Tactical Marines also on the verge of possibly losing a model at this point, but it looks like they'll be able to retreat out of there without losing any. Heretics will begin worshipping to give Troom some heals on both his Plague Champion as well as his Chaos Space Marines, but then he'll move out of range of the worship, and it also looks like he'll get some sustain via the Mucus Discharge upgrade. That is just a heal ability on the Plague Champion. Does both heal himself as well as units around him. Meanwhile, we are going to see a multi-laser turret put down right in front of this node. No generators to bash, only a node, and as I recently learned, from a comment, someone helped me out here, that uh, the node do it supposedly does not target. Now it actually looks like it is targeting. Sorry, the multi-laser turret doesn't target nodes, but right now it actually looks like it is. Maybe it's actually targeting the Inquisitorial Stormtroopers instead. At any rate, this Sentinel probably going to need to start getting out of there. Already used its stomp on the Strike Squad. The Strike Squad are still in pursuit, trying to chase after these Guardsmen. Going to be a big special attack, knocking over the Guardsmen. So they're now in a little bit of trouble. Ooh, they're in quite a bit of trouble. They actually go down. So that will be a Guardsman Squad down four. We actually need to get the rest of his units out of here alive. Sentinels that have about a third of its health. You know, the second Guardsman Squad also pretty close to dying. 70 hit points. Now down to 26, 18, 16, 12. And we have the, it's only the brother captain who's chasing after them. He, he got one hit point left. And the guard, the, the brother captain does manage to finish off that guardsman squad. So that's two squads of guardsmen lost four reacts in that engagement. Unfortunately, it began with his, his bash of the generators, or rather trying to secure the opposing power farm with that multi-laser turret, but it ended quite badly for him. Meanwhile, we are going to have a blue team offensive on the red team natural power farm. Force Commander getting pretty low on hit points, also upgrading to the Power Sword. So Shroom is pushing up, probably looking for a generator bash. Small build from Shroom. He doesn't have he, he doesn't have a third squad. He's only got the single heretic as well as the starting squad Chaos Space Marine. Not starting squad, he bought that one. Anyway, he's gonna put down a heavy bolter turret, and what an angle this is. It covers so much. I mean, this is something. Turrets, turrets are kind of cheesy in this game. It's it's just something weird about the way they are balanced where, like, if you don't deal with them appropriately, if you don't deal with them in a timely manner, or if you just don't deal with them at all, they can really, really change the pace of the game. Sometimes be the deciding factor in a game entirely. And oh no, Shroom is going to put down a second one. Uh, all right, yeah, he's still putting down that second one, so this is going to make it even harder to deal with. But at the moment, it's still open to the potential of a flank, uh, but we do have just a lot of units here from both Dark Lord Diablos as well as Shroom to try to protect this. So double heavy bolter turrets here. Makes it a little bit hard for... Although the turrets aren't really covering the farm... Okay, no, the front one is indeed coming, covering the farm. It's only the back one that isn't. Meanwhile, on this side, Reacts did replace both of his Guardsman squads, so a lot of requisition investment for him, uh, as he does perhaps here try to see if he can trade out the generator bashes on both sides as the 
this power farm is now starting to be taken for the blue team. It's not as easy for React to equalize this, but it's very, very much desirable. Second Strike Squad is moving in. There will be those banishments unloaded onto the Guardsmen. One Guardsman Squad pretty low. Doesn't want to risk losing another one. Don't know how much he could afford that. But the Strike Squad getting pretty close. Eh, I think the... Oh, no. If they really take this out, this better not... Is this really going to be a third? It's going to be a third Guardsman Squad taken down for Reax. A rather unfortunate start for him. Meanwhile... Oh, God. Shroom has put down a third turret, just totally locking this down. And this is this is now incredibly hard to deal with. So, Shroom, I was, wondering, I was wondering why he wasn't getting any other units. And it was clear he had an intention to do some turret cheese stuff in this game. We did see a sniper shot go in on the heavy bolter turret, but doing minimal damage. So, yeah, this is now incredibly difficult to deal with. Now, there is the possibility later on the game to break this wall right here as a way of getting around this heavy bolter turret. Otherwise, that wall placement is highly effective for the placement of that turret. Oh, no. And we're going to. Oh, that's going to be generators put down for the blue team because they basically own this power farm. And there's not a whole lot that the red team can do to get in on this. It's going to take a concerted effort, some very specific upgrades. Meanwhile, Commissar Lord, or rather Lord Commissar, I always like to call him the Commissar Lord because that was his old name. And I do find, I personally find that it flows off the tongue better, but of course, one of the reasons why people did want to call him the Lord Commissar instead of the Commissar Lord is that the abbreviation of CL was redundant. Oh no, Assault Marines down for Frolev. Uh, the uh, abbreviation of CL was redundant, or yeah, redundant for both the Chaos Lord and the Commissar Lord. All right, infiltrated Banshees will uh, reveal themselves. Oh, Banishment comes out from the Strike Squad, but kind of misses. And the Strike Squad going to be forced off there. One Strike Squad model already goes down. Can the Banshees get another one in retreat? Mm, looks like, oh, we're going to see some Sergeants purchased for both of those Strike Squads. And now will we see a Generator Bash from Sparks? No, it looks like he's going to be going for a flank. This Sentinel, oh no, this Sentinel for Reacts is so low. So, uh, at this point, aside from the fights that are going on, pretty clear that, you know, the blue team has control of this power farm for a while. So, to compensate, red team has put some power down on one of the contested nodes. Of course, this could be discovered and much more easily taken down than a natural power in most cases. But, for the moment, the blue team hasn't discovered it. Meanwhile, we are seeing ranger shots going in, grenades also going in, and doing quite a bit of damage to the Banshees. In fact, that's a, okay, two models going down on that Banshee squad. Or rather, two models left. I mean, well, the Farce here, this is looking, yeah, I was going to say, looking a little bit shady for her. For the most part, most commanders do not want to be in melee for an extended period of time against Howling Banshees unless they have some kind of ability that will directly counter them. And the Farce here, at least out of the gate, does not. All right, Flamer Tactical Marines getting a little bit too close to the Brother Captain. Oh, and we looks like we do have the red team taking control of some of the blue team's power right here. Oh, no, but two models go down for those shenanigans Oleg was trying to pull off with keeping that Tactical Marine squad in there. So eventually this will obviously be retaken by the blue team, but this is actually a pretty decent chunk of time where the power from this node is ticking in favor of the red team. You know, it looks like we're going to have a Sentinel decap on the natural for the blue team, and the blue team still has control of this. Grenades are being thrown in, but Grenade hits the Heretics, not the uh, last get on the Plague Champion. So the Plague Champion, I mean, he's, he's got a lot of ways to entrench, which I think is I think is particularly useful in team games. And he kind of has everything in, in regards to, like, being able to really get entrenched. We have the Chaos Shrine of Nurgle, which enables both healing and reinforcement, so it's very inherently a sustained shrine, which the other shrines don't do. All right, we do have Ogrens, though, coming in from Reacts. They have Inspired Determination active on them, and it looks like they're going to take out one of the heavy bolter turrets in the process. So that Inspired Determination, some pretty powerful buffs for those guardsmen, or rather, whatever squad you try to you decide to execute, whether it be Guardsmen or Ogrens. Ogrens do lose two models in the process, but pretty lucky not to lose their Bonehead leader. Now, that being said, two turrets were taken down, and they were both the heavy bolter turrets. Okay, Shrine is down, so we finally have the blue team starting to answer this cheese out of Shroom, or rather the red team answering this cheese out of Shroom. Huh, got you there. Or rather, I got myself. 
Anyway, Tactical Marines, oh no, Tactical Marines in melee with the Plague Champion. Red Team trying to make a push for this Wraith Guard, also another answer. A unit that does not get suppressed and does quite a lot of damage and can take out uh, buildings rather quickly. That being said, there is still one turret left here. It's a Laz Cannon turret. I don't know if Shroom is going to continue with this ridiculous... <laughs> he's, got a new, he's got a new Shrine of Nurgle, needs to reinforce his Heretic Squad here. I don't know if he's going to double down on this turret cheese or if he's going to actually start buying some other units. Lord Commissar, does he get out of there alive? It looks like he will. So we see that Lord Commissar with that Inspire Determination coming from the Bionic Eye upgrade. Meanwhile, a Spirit Stones cast will go down. Brother Captain's in quite a bit of trouble, but so are the Howling Banshees that were threatening him, so he will be okay. Meanwhile, these attacks are so overwhelmed, as are eventually the Scouts. We have a second task squad coming down here, doing some decent damage to the Dire Avengers, but eventually I think they'll be overwhelmed as well as we've got Strike Squad moving in, Zinch Chaos Space Marines, Grenade also being thrown. My god, that grenade did so much damage to that attack squad. One model also going down. So <laughs> Sentinel also goes down for React. So this has been a pretty messy game, and so much of it has been concentrated on this area with the crazy stuff. Not even crazy, it's just cheesy stuff that Shroom has been doing. <laughs> and he's, he's actually going to really just double down on the turrets. He puts down another turret. He still hasn't bought an... Bought an? We're just inventing words here. He still hasn't bought a Tier 2 unit. All right, Ogren's moving in, looking to do some damage to the Strike Squad. Mutinals, each Chaos Space Marines shooting in a bunch of damage as well. When will this When will this actually be dislodged? Oh, no, a big banishment, though, on the Guardsmen. Going to make it super hard for them to stay on the field much longer, but... I think that was at least a Strike Squad model wiped for John Grammaticus. In fact, he's lost quite a few Strike Squad's models. He may have even lost a Justicar on one of them. Assault Marine's going to have to jump out there. Oh, no. So many models going down in this game. It's It's been a bloodbath. And Ogrens, oh, no. They also lose their Bonehead leader. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I want to say, I feel like the Wraith Guard might be able to target ground here, and I wonder if they can actually blow apart the walls. Certainly, if you just use a vehicle, you can just drive through it, but I feel like... I feel like they need to take advantage of the fact that the walls here are destructible, and that and that once you destroy the walls, you do have line of sight to this, this otherwise very well-placed Heavy Bolter turret. All right, so Scouts will look for a back cap on the... Contested victory point. They'll get a decap, then throw in some grenades, and then retreat. Oh, man. I was getting a little dicey there. You know, what's going on over here? Finally, we see this happening. Wraithlord does walk in, break the walls, but it's also getting targeted by this Laz Cannon turret. Laz Cannon turret does so much damage. It does, like, 300 damage per shot. Yeah, it does roughly 300 damage per shot, as we see there. Paladins, meanwhile, are now called in by John Grammaticus, who also skipped Tier 2 entirely. Wow. In fact, all of our... I don't think any of our blue team players bought a single unit in Tier 2. Maybe some upgrades. Definitely some Justicars for John Grammaticus. Looks like we've got quite a few upgrades for Dar Diablos' Farseer. We've got the Rune Armor, the Gravity Blade. Oh, my God. Strike Squad in quite a bit of trouble. Will they go down in retreat? I don't think so, actually. They've got so much health left on that last model. Grenades will go out on the Ogrens. Ogrens will just dodge it. Levitation Field was also used by that Farseer right there. Level 3 she is. We've also got a Plague Champion who now has a Power Fist, which makes sense just in the reasoning that usually the starting Bolter, although it's nice in Tier 1, but it doesn't scale particularly well, especially when you start getting into Tier 3. Let fly. We're hearing those loud scouts throwing in some grenades. They do catch a Heretic model. But it's not quite enough. Finally, we're going to see a Laz Cannon Turret go down. No, the... Okay, fine. Yeah. I was questioning it there. For a second there, it looks like the attacks were not focusing on that turret. Meanwhile, Olev still being forced off here. It's a double cap for the blue team. Uh, it's it's absolutely bewilders the mind that the blue team still controls the red team's natural power farm here. It's, it's absolutely insane. As well as the sustainability that Shroom is getting off of this between the turrets, now with these heretics reinforcing from the Shrine of Nurgle. They've got level 4 heretics here as well. Meanwhile, it looks like there's an actual fight going on while I'm looking at a shrine. Paladins moving in. Paladins have been doing quite well for John Grammaticus, but we've got plasma guns from the Guardsmen that will threaten those Paladins quite a bit, so they are looking to get out of here. Eventually, though, the Paladins will get some support. So it doesn't look like the red team are getting out of their base just yet. The Seer Council will prove to be quite a threat 
against the Ogrens from React. Meanwhile, Assault Marines are here. My god, they're so low. Do they even make it out here alive? No, they don't. Alright, oh no. Olev. Olev is an interesting one. It's, this has been a, I, I feel like this has been a very, very rough game for him. I think he lost two squads of Assault Marines. He is actually a very good player, although I generally, I'm pretty sure that Space Marines are not his main race. Uh, I generally think of him as a Tyranid main, and at least as far as Tyranids go, he is quite good. But I, I think we can also prob perhaps see that the nature of this game has already been kind of silly, particularly with Shroom, who's also a very good player. Uh, and he has, he literally, his, he literally has not gotten any units after this Chaos Space Marine squad. This was his literally, literally his last unit purchase. The rest of his purchases have been war gear upgrades or buildings. Meanwhile, plasma cannon shots coming in from a distance, but oh no, Olev losing yet another squad. It's it's either just not Olev's day or he's just he's just not entirely there, maybe under the influence of something. Meanwhile, this Wraith Lord, I, I actually feel the Paladins could turn around and just fight this Wraith Lord, mm, but the Rogrins coming in here now make it actually a little bit more questionable. They would probably lose some models in the process, so they will knock the Ogrins over. Paladins still potentially in trouble at the point where they could potentially risk losing a model. Meanwhile, we are going to see a Commander Revive attempt by Reacts on Sparks. We also see a War Gear out of this... Um, I meant to target the Brother Captain. He does have the Nemesis Warding Staff that does grant the Ward skill. Ward, you use it on a target squad. I'm not sure if maybe you can use... I'm not sure if you can use it on vehicles, but you can definitely use it on squads. It grants a 30% damage resistance. We're going to see it right there. 30% damage resistance. I believe also immunity to weapon knockback. Second one is a little bit of a moot point for paladins who are already innately immune to weapon knockback. But still, that 30% damage resistance on top of how tanky paladins already are, it would make them pr pretty difficult to deal with. Meanwhile, Howling Banshees, they're going for the Dire Avengers, but they're getting sliced apart by the Wraith Lord in the process. They will get a heal from the Farseer on their way to their retreat, so that should prevent them from losing any more models, but doesn't actually... He still bled a bit from uh, losing those two models. It's going to be an instant retreat. The combo there was Psychic Storm into the Seer Council engage, and Seer Council or would just absolutely tear up those guards and so Reax realized that he needs to get them out of there. But he actually used the summary execution on the guardsman squad. Once you upgrade to the Commissar squad leader on guardsman, there is an ability called summary execution that can be used to break retreat. So he actually keeps them out on the field that way while also getting them out of the Psychic Storm combo. Meanwhile, here is that Levitation Field from the Farseer yet again. Farseer is potentially in a little bit of trouble though. She's being focused down. She will go down. Those look like a Wraith, Wraith Guard model was killed, but that is a dead Farseer. And this power farm is still controlled by the blue team. I also feel like the victory points haven't been ticking down that much. I think there have been a few decaps uh, and some backcaps by the red team. Meanwhile, we've got Shroom pushing, pushing so far into Olev's base. This is an Eldritch Storm to take out a... We take out a uh, Chaos Shrine of Nurgle, which does feel a little bit overkill. Shroom literally going for the base turrets of Olev. Where are the rest of Olev's units? They're in the middle. Or at least the Terminators are. They're, they're in just completely different places. Shroom going for that base destruction. Typically not a real thing, but this... 10% of the damage has already been done to this stronghold, which is kind of funny. Oh, and the Laz Cannon turret. If anything, the Laz Cannon turret coming from behind. I feel like if the Laz Cannon turret would face forward, and assuming it can target a stronghold, which I don't see any reason why it couldn't, but, you know, just in case, I'm covering my bases here. Oh, no, what is this? This is Reacts trying to help Olev, trying to help make it so that Olev doesn't literally lose his base. I actually feel that Laz Cannon turret, if it was facing the direction of this stronghold, I feel like, again, with 300 damage per shot, I feel like it would actually threatened to take out Olev's base. This is this is just ridiculous. This is ridiculous. We've got Reacts defending this. This isn't even React's base. At least Reacts can heal off of it. Okay, Touch of Nurgle is used by Shroom. He decides he wants to stay in here. Levitation field used on the Terminators, however. There is also going to be a Wraith Lord trying to do some damage to them. This is absolutely ridiculous. Now on the bright side, 
the red team have their natural power farm for the first time in about 20 minutes. Or however long this game has been going on so far, I don't know. I could check. 20 minutes, I'm, I was pretty much exactly right on the money. Alright then, uh, Forest Commander has three hit points, so he is dead. This this is this game has been a very very strange one for Olev. It's it's definitely not the best showcase of Olev's ability. And before you want to turn into you know one of those uh, armchair generals, let me make sure I say that one right. Armchair generals. Trust me when I say that Olev actually is a really good player. Like he really is. But this game might not entirely be that serious for him, or he might just be fooling around, or as I said, under the influence of something. Anyway, big engagement happening right now as the Paladins move in. I believe we've got, yes, we've got some Grey Knight Terminators as well. This is a lot of super heavy infantry armor from John Grammaticus. This is going to be a rocket run. It's going to be a rocket run. I don't know about this rocket run. Yeah, I actually... All right, it might result in the death of the Strike Squad if there is some follow-up, but if there isn't, I don't feel that that was a great rocket one. Meanwhile, the Paladin's still in here. They've got Ward on them, but the Brother Captain actually went down. You know, that will be a dead fire prism. Lehman Russ trying to kite away from all of these units chasing after it. Not too many true hard counters to the Lehman Russ. In fact, I would say pretty much none. Most damage, of course, would be the Paladins, but the Paladins are nowhere near it, and the Paladins you know, should be able to be kited. There's going to be some more levitation right here. This is actually Holocaust from the Grey Knight Terminators. That is a different ability. At any rate, we're finally going to see the red team pushing the blue team out. Victory points are quite even, but this has been such a strange game. Paladin's pretty low. Rather, the Grey Knight Terminators are pretty low, but I don't know if we will. I, th I think the Lehman Russ, if the Lehman Russ can pursue it might be able to finish off that Terminator. It should be fast enough, but it also could be going into a trap. Here is a Predator on its way. Yeah, so the, the Lehman Russ will back off. Lehman Russ at this time might be looking to upgrade to a Vanquisher Cannon. Oh, I was about to say, Reacts though has so many resources. Yeah, he prioritizes getting the second Lehman Russ out first before getting an upgrade on this one. And that is something I agree with. I do think it is more ideal, more optimal, what have you. And just the threat of having two tanks out on the field rather than one with an upgraded weapon is, is quite a bit uh, stronger. And that being said, uh, let me see. What else do we have coming out from our blue team players? And I've talked about this in some recent casts. The starting cannon on the Lehman Rust is, is actually fairly nicely balanced in that it's it's the most versatile uh, it, it's arguably the more the most versatile of the Lehman Russ's weapons whereas the other two weapons are, are a bit more specialized where there are ways in which those other two weapons are much stronger but they come with some drawbacks anyway the Lehman Russ is going to be moving up Ooh, that will be another squad going down looks like that was a heretic squad going down yes so that's heretic squad down for Shroom. Zinch Chaos Space Marines also in retreat. Will the... Oh, the Plague Champion. Okay, yeah. He uses Pestilence Strike. I, I briefly blanked out on that one. Pestilence Strike on the... On the Seer Council. Just an area of effect stun ability. So, very useful against a lot of the late game melee units. Or really any melee unit. But you need it a little bit more against the late game melee units. Fire Prism is awfully close here, but uh, well, it's not actually. Well, actually, this Fire Prism could be flanked. Oh yes, this Fire Prism is 100% done. Lehman Russ is scoring rear armor shots. Yeah, that was so. That was a very clear overextension by that Fire Prism. Fire Prism has very, very long range, so ideally you, you just don't want it to be that close because, of course, it's made of papier-mâché. Strike Squad will be re retreating out of there. I believe they lost a... I believe they lost a Just Card in that retreat. So Red Team will be pushing out and back into the contested victory point. So the victory point's still pretty even. It's been, it's, 
If anything, the game has been a little less exciting ever since the red team finally... Oh my god, look at how much destruction there was here just as a result of so much action going on right here. This was probably the most interesting state of the game, or stage of the game. And the victory points, strangely, I feel like they have not progressed that much. So, and Shroom now, especially done with his shenanigans, just now does need to move into some standard tier 3 stuff, and it's we're just going to have some late, big, late game uh, shootouts and fights from here on out. Strike Squad looking to tie up those Wraith Guard and melee. Wraith Guard, of course, will just duck back into the Webway Gate. And now we have quite a bit of a standoff, and it is on the blue team, of course, to make something happen. Our red team currently looking a little bit better equipped, though, I would say. Just at a, at a very quick glance, I'm kind of liking their compositions a little bit better. Of course, they already have the contested victory point, and they've also just straight up got more units. They also have more of... They have more super units across their players, and I guess that basically means that they've... Yeah, that's actually kind of debatable in, depending on what you consider a super unit, but normally something like the Land Raider as well as the Avatar. I think those two really do give the red team an easier time of holding this. And what's going to happen? All right, so Shroom actually going for a little bit more of an indirect route. We're going to have Chaos Terminators looking for the decap on the natural victory point from the red team, but we're going to start having some answers here. We're also going to have some... Okay, we actually have a reacts. He actually decides to split the upgrades, getting the best of both worlds. The long-range anti-vehicle damage of that Vanquisher cannon with the close-range anti-infantry damage. Oh my god, so much is happening right here! And this this Land Raider Redeemer, it's absolutely... its I'm pretty sure it's gone. Oh yeah, it's 100% gone. My god. Maybe that was just all a distraction. That what happened right here. That, that Lehman Russ, absolutely. Not Lehman Russ, that Land Raider Redeemer. He had another tough unit loss for Olev. All right, Nun Shell Fall has been activated by the Commissar. I'm not sure if this is actually the the best moment, but never, nevertheless, it's been activated. That, and that's that's just how it is. One Fire Dragon Squad will go down, so that is one of the anti-vehicle threats on the Lehman Russes. Gone. Eldritch Storm is used. Might catch one of the Lehman Russes. I Oh no, I think that's another... I think that's an El... Yeah, that Eldritch didn't catch either of these Lehman Russes. I, I think that was the intention, but it didn't catch either one. So, double cap for the blue team yet again. More things going on. Oh no, this Wraith Lord is done. Wraith Lord is done. It, it realistically just can't... Can't chase after a Mark of Corn Predator, or really just about any tank in the game. I don't think that that Wraith Lord even had a Bright Lance. I'm not sure if it had any upgraded weapon. The Executioner Lehman Rust, particularly powerful against these, against the Paladins as well as the, as well as the Grey Knight Terminators. Even if it doesn't necessarily look at it, just because that that just kind of goes to show you how incredibly tanky these units are in general. They just have so much in terms of hit points. But this Lehman Rust. Uh, 33.19 Plasma Cannon DPS. Plasma Cannon damage does 50% increased damage against Super Heavy Infantry Armor. So that means the actual DPS against these, um, these Terminators is actually something closer to 50. And it's doing Area of Effect damage as well. Oh no, one of these... Okay, the Vanquisher Lehman Rush just barely makes it out of there alive. The Paladins, man, the Paladins of all things were chasing in there. I, yeah, I think I think John Grammaticus realized that, that these Paladins are probably dead, and Vanquisher Cannon will finish off the last Paladin model. So John Grammaticus loses a Paladin. That being said, he's got quite a few resources stockpiled up, and he should be looking at a new unit pretty soon, whether that's a Land Raider Crusader or a new squad of Paladins. Blade Champion, a bit of trouble right here. Fully upgraded Armor of Pestilence. What other upgrades do we have on our commanders? We have already seen the upgrades out of Dark Lord Diablos. We do have Mantle of Terra now on the Brother Captain. We also see some Terminators just being levitated by the Levitation Field. Follow-up coming in from the fusion guns of the Fire Dragons. The Fire Dragons, unfortunately, just under too much pressure from the Lehman Russes as well as the Guardsmen that they will have to retreat. So... These double, these double Lehman Russ is actually doing a lot of work now from Reacts. Oh, that's going to be a dead predator as well. Yeah, I think that 
Reacts had a really, really rough start when he lost three squads of Guardsmen, but right now his, I would honestly say, his double Lehman Russes are kind of carrying the game for the red team. Now, that being said, the red team is not out of the woods yet. They still, they're still in, at a disadvantage in terms of victory points. Terminators here only at half health, but the Dire Avengers don't do a whole lot of damage against super heavy infantry armor. They will want to dodge that grenade, though. The grenade, they, they definitely want to at least respect the grenade, even though they can just kind of laugh in the face of the shuriken catapults of the Dire Avengers. That being said, here comes a lot of support. Now these Terminators in a bit of trouble. Olev buys scouts of all things, which does strike me as kind of strange, unless he's looking for back caps or unless he intends to get a vehicle behind that. All right, Avatar moving up for Sparks. I don't feel I've actually caught much of his action. We see a Laz Cannon turret put down for Shroom, but the purpose of that Laz Cannon turret seems a little bit unclear to me. I think the most it does is it makes it harder for the Lehman Russes to approach in that area. Oh no, this is gonna be the end of one of the Lehman Russes. They did so much. So I think the purpose of that Laz Cannon turret is mostly to prevent a back cap on the blue teams naturally. All right, Orbital Bombardment will be scaring off the red team, however, this Avatar honestly needs to be pretty careful. Wailing Doom is going to go out. Will it be completely dodged? Not completely dodged, but it's it's mostly dodged. However, that also puts the Fire Dragons in a little bit of a compromising position, and eventually they will decide to retreat. Now, the Fire Dragons are actually a great source of damage against the Avatar. The melted damage of those fusion guns does actually do bonus damage against Super Heavy Infantry Armor, which is what the Avatar has. I believe it's only 25% increased damage, but that's still great, especially because the base damage of the Fire Dragons is pretty high. The main issue, though, with Fire Dragons is that they're still just a squad. They're not long range, and sometimes they will just take too much damage in the process of trying to do their damage because they need to get so close. Grenade will go in. It's the f oh, it did, did catch some strike mo strike squad models. Meanwhile, the auto cannon terminator is looking to put some damage on the Lehman Russ. Lehman Russ will back up. Man, level three Lehman Russ <laughs> misses right there. Uh, does actually have so much health though, fourteen hundred fifty-two on that Lehman Russ. So more levitation fields coming out from the Farseer. I mean, we're seeing that levitation field. It works on the Terminators. That being said, I forget. I feel like that levitation field does actually make the... That whatever unit is disabled by the levitation field, I think actually takes less damage. I'm going to have to check that one up just to make sure. It. I'm pretty sure I remember that in the tooltip, and it certainly looks that way. <laughs> Meanwhile, it doesn't matter. In the end, Olev's Terminator is going to be dead. So replacement with Lehman Russ coming out for Reacts. Got another Vanquisher. No, he I think he had the Vanquisher. It was the yeah, it was the it was the executioner that went down before. Oh, but this is gonna be a Land Raider Phobos moving in. A lot of damage coming out from that Land Raider Phobos with those dual twin length LAS guns, LAS cannons. Lehman Russ needs to be, not Lehman Russ, Land Raider uh, Phobos needs to be very careful when being shot at by the Wraith Guard, but the Wraith Guard now can't shoot anything because they're caught by the levitation field yet again. And I think the Farser was even knocked over with that. Oh my god, so many things being knocked over and so many things being killed by this Noxious Cloud right here. I think that should be a Guardsman squad down. No, I think it wasn't. Okay, Reacts certainly has a lot of luck in this late game, but oh no, I jinxed him. He's going to lose the Land Raider, not the Land Raider, the Lehman Russ. His second loss on an Executioner Lehman Russ. Those Executioner Lehman Russes do have to get so close, but I think uh, it's 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 very risky business trying to get this close to a Land Raider Redeemer, or rather a Land Raider Phobos. I know what it is. I'm just testing you. See if you guys catch me on those things. All right, Tactical Marine Squad <laughs> loses two models in retreat. Might be a third model. No, Grenade wasn't quite on point. So Blue Team looking to take back the contested victory point. Looking to take the Natural away from the Red Team as well. Looking to end this game. However, the uh, Chaos Terminators will be deterred by the Avatar. Avatar winds up with a Wailing Doom, but it hits absolutely nothing. Meanwhile, that's also going to be an Eldritch. That should be the end of the Land Raider Phobos. 
Just needs like one more hit from anything. It's actually taking more than one hit. It was taking like 10 hits from the Dark Reapers, which don't do much damage, but not much more damage needed to be done. Okay, so that's a nice win, taking out the Land Raider Phobos. Remember, that's a Phobos, not a Redeemer. But the red team needs to do something about this, and they don't have much time. They've that or or this. They they need to find one of them. They're running so low on time. It's gonna be oh no, the lone tactical marine model can't do anything. I don't know. This might just be it. This might be the end of this game. Yeah, I mean this touch of Nurgle is gonna make it really hard for this army to approach right here. We've got so many units in their way. I don't see anything getting close enough for a decap. I think that will be the win for the blue team. Oh, big holocaust by the paladins for whatever it's worth at this time. Levitating both two squads of guardsmen as well as a squad of reapers. <laughs> but the Farseer will return the favor on those Grey Knight Terminators. That being said, this is the end of the game. Blue team do take it. All right, that will be it. I hope you enjoyed it, and have a good night.